What's up guys, Drubinski here. I've just completed my mission to visit every country in the world. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you an updated list of my top 10 favorite countries. We're gonna kick it off in reverse order with my 10th favorite country of Turkey. I visited Turkey many, many times, probably 10 times. It is such a wonderful place because it's right where East meets West. You have like Europe, European vibe, European culture, but also Asia and Asian life. Istanbul is literally the only city in the world that is split between two continents, which is really cool. You can take a little ferry across the Bosphorus Sea and visit both sides of the city. Now, what I love about Turkey is you have incredible food. So Turkish food is internationally known for its kebabs. There's a debate where the original kebab comes from, but I like to say it's Turkey because my favorite one is in Turkey and they claim to, it to be theirs. And so you'll see the guys cooking it on a huge um, little oven and they, they you know, chop it off with the, stick, with the knife and it's just so delicious. So food number one, you have Turkish delights, you have Turkish tea, Turkish coffee, all kinds of delicious sweets all exist in Turkey. The country is a lot more than Istanbul. My favorite places are Gaziantep, which is a culinary capital, Antakya, which is all the way down south by the Turkish border. And there's a city called Mardin, which has this really cool fortress, like an old ancient fortress in Mesopotamia. There's another city called Diyarbakir in the east. It's where the Kurdish people live. It is known to have the biggest city walls in the world behind uh, the Great Wall of China. So it is really fascinating. I love the vibe walking around the street. Everybody's so friendly saying hi. It's just a... Uh, a really fascinating place. You have beaches everywhere, you have mountains, you have snow, um, all kinds of different fascinating villages. I visited a village in the north uh, which speaks with whistles, so they only have whistles that they communicate with. It's fascinating. I met the world's tallest man who lives in Turkey and there's a whole lot happening in that country and I hope you get the chance to visit. We're gonna head into my ninth favorite country which is Japan. Now Japan is one of those countries that's high on everyone's list if they've never visited. It's a fascinating place. You have literally a culture that is 10 years ahead of the world in terms of technology, innovation. Just think about it. All the main electronics companies, Sony, Mitsubishi, Panasonic, all of the car company, Toyota, Honda, uh, there's literally like the list goes on and they're all invented in Japan. So it's, it's just really cool to see how innovative they are. And when you go there, you can really soak it in and, and feel the culture of Japan. And what makes it so unique from what I know is that Japan has never been colonized and they're an island. So they've been living this isolated world for so long and that's why they just did everything themselves. So when you go there, it's not like any of its neighbors. It's not like anywhere else in the world. You really enter a separate universe. It sounds weird to explain, but Japan is just so freaking cool. Obviously the food, you have sushi, you have ramen, you have delicious beer, Sapporo. And when you walk into a restaurant, you literally order on um, a screen and you sit down and it comes to you. And yes, a lot of the restaurants do have robots that serve you. You have capsule hotels in Japan. You have Roppongi, which is a district of Tokyo. There's another area called Shibuya Crossing, which is the most populated intersection in the world in Tokyo. And then if you get outside Tokyo, you have a beautiful city called Kyoto, which is Zen, temples, Buddhist, it's really beautiful and Osaka, it's like a, a little Tokyo. And then I've yet to visit other parts of the country, but I really wanna go down uh, to some of the islands, Okinawa, and go up north. So Japan is a really fascinating place and I hope you get the chance to visit. We're gonna move into number eight, the Czech Republic. I might be slightly biased because I lived and studied abroad there in 2012. It's where I got uh, hooked on the travel bug and it's where this whole world started for me. It's when I got introduced to new peoples, cultures, lifestyles, cuisines, and I traveled to 20 countries during that semester in Europe. So Prague always has a special place in my heart. But honestly, I've been back to Prague so many times since I left, most recently a couple weeks ago, where I got this tattoo. It says 197, can you guys see that? For all the countries in the world, my final passport stamp. You guys are actually the first ones to see that. <laughs> Prague is a really beautiful city. You have medieval churches, Old Town Square. You have Charles Bridge, one of the oldest bridges in the world. You have this really fascinating culture where it's like Eastern European, vibes, you know, the culture, the way that people act, and I don't know, it feels very different than Western Europe, but they're open-minded and the economics of Czech Republic is very westernized. So it's also right in the middle, right in the crossroads. And Prague is, is awesome. You can, within a five hour train ride, you can get to Budapest, you can get to Munich, you can get to Krakow, Dresden, Germany, and or you can just fly around. I, I really love Prague, walking around the charming streets. It's a small city, so you can really get anywhere you need in 30 minutes by foot, or you can take the metro or the tram. 
and there's so many cool underground bars like old ruined pubs from World War II. Just a fascinating place, beautiful castles everywhere, beer gardens. The Czechs drink more beer per capita than anyone in the world. So when you go there, you can go hang out. There's a place called Rigrovi Sadi, which is a very old beer garden uh, with beautiful views of Prague that I love. And you have the Voltava River that goes through. I can go on and on and on, but uh, Prague is just uh, my happy place. And, and actually, if you guys can see up here, I have a picture of Prague in my room, in my office, because that is where it all started for me and I always want to remember Prague. We're going to move into my seventh favorite country, which is Mexico. So it's funny, as an American, and there's this general feeling in this country that Mexico is not nice. Maybe it has dirty water, maybe it's unsafe. We've heard stories of Americans going there on vacation and they never come home. And so for one reason or another, Mexico has a bad reputation. But I'm here to tell you that Mexico is freaking amazing. As soon as you get away from the beach town resorts, Cancun, Cabo, Tulum, Acapulco, Puerto Vallarta, those are all beach towns, resort towns. Once you get inland, you go to Mexico City, you go to Oaxaca, you go to uh, Chiapas, which is a state in the south. It is fascinating. Mexico is super diverse. You have fantastic food, very hospitable people. I think some of the most in all of the world. And Mexico is cheap. It's got just amazing culture, architecture, uh, world wonders. There's a place called Teotihuacan, which is these old Mayan uh, temples that's just north of Mexico City and you can drive there. You have obviously Chichen Itza in the Yucatan province. Um, one of my favorite experiences in Mexico was going into the, the Lacandon jungle or the rainforest all the way down south by the Guatemalan border. And you, I was literally hanging out with dudes that was like using a machete to cut branches off a tree and drinking water from it. And they just live in the nature. And, and I don't know, I, I did a whole story on Mexico's most remote tribe and they wear these white shirts and they're so peaceful. And Mexico is so huge. It's one of the biggest countries in the world, both in terms of size and population. And there's a lot happening there. Also, the beaches are nice. I don't, I'm not saying to ignore them, but if you get a chance, go to Mexico City, go into some of these other places and, and you will not regret it. That takes us into my sixth favorite country, which is Namibia. It's my favorite country on the entire African continent. It's in the southwestern part, bordering Angola, bordering South Africa, Botswana. It is a beautiful country. It's one of the least populated countries in the entire world, second only to Mongolia. There's only 2 million people living in a huge country. Most of it is desert. And Namibia is all about the beauty, the natural beauty. So I took a road trip for a few weeks, went all around, it's the only place in the world that I've seen beautiful sand dunes intersecting with ocean. Like literally you're driving for miles and miles, hours and hours, and you're just seeing ocean waves crash on these beautiful sand dunes. And I have a drone shot of that. It's really beautiful. We can go to a German town called Swakopum. So Namibia was colonized by Germany for a while and, and they left over the beer and a lot of the pretzels and the cuisine. And Swakopum is really interesting. The people actually speak German. I met a little girl there who speaks fluent German at a school. Cut to that clip. Ich heiße Wilhelmina. Ich bin acht Jahre alt. The capital city of Windhoek is just beautiful and peaceful. They have this food called biltong, which is like beef jerky, but their own style. Everybody speaks English. It's kind of like South Africa. It's really similar to South Africa. And at one point they were a country to living together. You have beautiful, beautiful wildlife in the north. There's a national park called Itosha National Park where you can see all the big five animals, lions, elephants, zebras, and, and it's just such a wonderful place. And there's a, another place inside of the desert called Susisvlei. Um, they speak kind of like a, a, a Dutch language there. And you have these like old trees that have somehow stayed in the middle of the desert and they have these really spooky looking um, vines coming out of the ground. That was a pretty cool place. Met some wonderful people there and, and um, I feel like Namibia is a place I'll be back very soon. My fifth favorite country is Venezuela. Oh my God, I didn't really know what to expect before I went there um, about a year ago. And I went during the pandemic and during the worst political and economical times of the country, but it was awesome. The people were so welcoming. It's not even that dangerous. I mean, parts of Caracas can be a little sketchy, you know, in Patate, which is the, one of the biggest slums in the world. I went there, you know, you gotta be careful who, where you go, who you meet. But once you get out of Caracas, it's totally normal. Yeah, the money's really inflated. Like $1 was 2 million bolivares when I was there. Now $1 is like 5 million bolivares. And you can get like one bread for like 5 million bolivares. But forgetting about that, they've adopted the dollar so it's not that big of a deal anymore. You'll, you'll have nothing but 
warm hospitality, big smiles, people inviting you into their house, giving you a drink, going on the beautiful Caribbean coast. Nobody knows that Venezuela actually has the longest coast in all the Caribbean. So you have so many beautiful little islands and crystal clear water, coconuts. It is a beautiful vibe down there and I absolutely loved it. Oh, and I can't forget the cuisine. They have arepas, which is, I don't know how to explain it. It's like a corn um, meal, corn flake, crunchy outside and inside you have all these beautiful ingredients that just delicious pork cheese vegetables um, empanadas are delicious and um, I don't know Venezuela really has this charm this vibe and I that is a country I will absolutely be back and I want you to know not to be scared to go there it's really a nice place and I can't say enough about Venezuela number four we have Lebanon located right in the Middle East and I don't know Beirut is like the most happening city, best nightlife, amazing vibes, boardwalks on the Mediterranean Sea. You have beautiful ancient Roman ruins that aren't too far away. It's called Baalbek, that place. Uh, you can go up in the mountains. People think that, Le that Lebanon is a desert. It's not a desert, it's very green. You have mountains, it snows. Literally in the same day you can go snowboarding and go hang out on the beach in, in beautiful weather in the same day. Um, going down south in Lebanon, there's all these beautiful little villages. Going east towards the border of Syria, more beautiful villages, incredible food. I like to group uh, Le Lebanese and Syrian food together. Hummus, falafel, shawarma, kibbeh, all the different kind of flavors and it's so fresh. And of course Lebanese people, they're trilingual, they speak French, they speak Arabic and English. They're so outgoing and friendly and want to hang out, go to the shisha bar, go have fun. A lot of people think it's a strict Islamic country. No, it's Islamic and Christian, about half and half. And it's not a very religious or strict country. And, and well, depending on which areas you go to, but uh, if you go to Beirut, you will have an amazing time and I hope you get the chance to do it. Number three, we have Afghanistan. I think if you've seen any of my content, you know how much I love that country. It has a special place in my heart and I'm devastated uh, by the Taliban takeover several months ago. I went to Afghanistan first three years ago, spent a couple weeks there that trip, and then I went back uh, during COVID before Taliban takeover. I went back for three weeks. And so I've spent a little over a month in the country altogether, been to seven different provinces all over the place. And I can talk on and on and on about Afghanistan, but the first thing I wanna say is the people are the most absolute, genuine, hospitable people on this planet. They will invite you into their house, insist that you sleep on their bed and they will sleep on the floor. I love that when you go there, it feels like you've entered a time machine back hundreds of years, the way they dress, the way they hang out. Not many people are on their phones, on their smartphones. They just relax, they hang out, they drink tea. When you walk through the market, it's so traditional. And the way they make ice cream, they have these like buckets and they push with their hands these ice buckets to make ice cream. Alexander the Great's former home is in Herat in the West. I went there with my friend Thomas from Yes Theory and we had a wonderful time. It's on the ancient Silk Road so you have all these ideas that have come by hundreds and hundreds of years ago and they still reflect in the culture today. And I am just beyond obsessed with Afghanistan, Kabul, Herat, Mazar Sharif, Panjshir, mountains, all these different places in the country, Kandahar in the South, and amazing pomegranates, oh my God, the fruit. How did I forget? The best oranges, pomegranates, apples I've had in my entire life. Afghanistan is and will always be one of my favorite countries in this world. I'm not gonna recommend you to go there now because it's not safe, but hopefully, inshallah, someday in the future, it will be safe for everybody to visit. That leads me into number two, Iran. Not surprisingly, Iran is located in the same region, Eurasia, it's where Europe meets Asia. Same places where Turkey is, uh, Lebanon, and Afghanistan, and Iran is right in there. My favorite region in the world. Um, Iran, there's this misconception that Iran is dangerous, is a terrorist country, blah, 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 all this stuff is happening. It's honestly one of the safest countries in the world. There is nothing bad happening. You walk around the streets at two in the morning and people are nice to you. Maybe it's because like America has a conflict politically with Iran, I don't know. But all I wanna say is that Persian people are incredible, just like Afghans. It's kind of like Afghanistan, but it's a little more modernized, for lack of a better word. Walking around Tehran, you'll see more tall buildings, more fancy coffee shops. It's, it's, it's a little bit less traditional than Afghanistan, but um, all the values, the core values and the cuisine is similar and it is just fantastic. Going to Persepolis, which is this beautiful, ancient, two, 3,000 year old city. 
That's the UNESCO World Heritage Site. It's just outside of a city called Shiraz. You have a city called Yazd, which is a very religious city. It's the birthplace of the Zoroastrian religion. Uh, Tehran obviously is beautiful, lots of really cool buildings there, ancient libraries and mosques. My favorite place in Iran is Esfahan. It's the, one of the biggest city squares in the world. I think the second biggest behind only Beijing. Yeah, I don't know, walking around Iran, meeting the people, they're so friendly and they don't even hate America. Government is one thing, people is another thing. Um, when you tell them about the US, they're like, oh, my uncle lives there, I want to visit, and, and uh, I always have dreams to go there. And uh, Persian people are so down to earth, so friendly. I've never had one bad experience in Iran, and I'm actually planning to go back in just a few months, so stay tuned for that content. And last but not least, my favorite country in the world is the Philippines. Now, a lot of you guys know that I've been with Deanna for six years, um, but I want to let you know that I fell in love with her country years before I fell in love with her. Back to 2013 when I was teaching English in Korea, I went to the Philippines several times. I think I'd been four times before I met Deanna. So I already loved the country. I've spent two years of my life there, still have a place in, in a condo in Manila. With the Philippines, I mean, we're going to start off with over 7,100 islands. Um, a lot of them are untouched beauty, private islands. So there's never a place to run out. There's always untouched beauty, beaches everywhere. Filipinos always have this like happy face. It doesn't matter if something bad happened, if they had a family death or if they're having a really bad day or something, they always will greet you with a smile and be respectful to you. And that's what I really love about the Philippines. They've also adapted to so many different cultures around the world and that's why they can just fit anywhere. It's like, for example, in Korea, they're very homogenous and they have one kind of mindset and one way of life. I know that because I lived there for two years, but the Philippines is not like that. They've adapted, they've lived all over the world. They've been around, they, they have a lot of American influence from pop culture, but they also can do things themselves and they have a cuisine that is not really internationally known. Like Filipino restaurants are not commonly found, but there's delicious food called sinigang and bulalo. Those are two uh, soups, like sour stews. And then you have sisig, which is like chopped up pork. You have halo halo, which is a delicious dessert. There's all kinds of delicious Filipino foods that I can go on and on. So my favorite islands are Shiergao, Bahol, uh, Sikihor, which is really beautiful. And then going down south, uh, you can find Romblon, you can find Zamboanga, which is actually a really cool city. And then of course in Manila, you have beautiful places just down south of there called Batangas. In the north, you have a place called Batanes, which is like New Zealand. Philippines is very affordable. It's something for everyone. People speak English, so you never have a language barrier. And just everywhere you go in the Philippines, you will have a huge smile on your face because you'll know that you're welcome. You'll know that it's safe, it's beautiful, amazing culture and you're just surrounded by love and happiness and that is the philippines in a nutshell with that all being said guys that wraps up my 10 <laughs> most favorite countries in the world it's actually hard to choose 10 because it's like choosing a favorite movie it's like well there's a lot of movies i like um but you know if i really had to recommend 10 countries to visit or, or 10 countries to look into it would be these 10 countries uh, who knows this list may evolve over time uh, i think i did a, a, a top 10 country uh, list like three years ago and, and some of these were a little bit different but um, yeah thank you guys for tuning in really appreciate it uh, comment below what are your favorite countries and if you have any to add to my list I would love to hear from you and um, yeah guys stay tuned for more amazing travel videos coming soon and with that all being said have a great day and I'll see you next time peace I'm Drew Binsky and thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe to this channel down there if you want to see more adventures from every country and below you can find my second channel where I tell stories about the most inspiring people in the world. Also, I'm giving away for free all my best travel tips and secrets for finding cheap flights on that middle link. Until next time, stay safe, be spontaneous and just go.